Hey guys, so another video today about uh, IT services inside Zabbix. Like uh, in the newest releases, I don't actually remember in which version the naming was changed uh, only to the services, and all the releases, like definitely in 3.0, it's still called IT services. Um, this stuff was requested like multiple times in the past i just did not uh, did not feel a need to create some some information about it because it's actually fairly simple so uh, what is it services uh, basically a calculation for sla for your services like inside is abex it is easily possible to monitor tons of metrics from different hosts hosts and uh, data sources and, and other stuff but not always like uh, some some triggers or received metrics actually mean to us on uh, let's say a period on a longer period like we know that there was uh, not enough disk space or that cpu utiliz utilization was high or that there was uh, some drop in in the traffic sent or received but did that actually caused us some problems so let's say if we want to analyze it at the end of the year we really don't know so the best option how you can make sure about actual availability and um, that your services are reachable is with an SLA and what is SLA first of all where it is configurable in the configuration services so only as Abix admins and super admins will be able to do that you need to click on the configuration services this is the blank screen uh, which is by default so nothing is configured here and uh, basically all the services configuration is like building your tree of your services that you are providing and specifying when there is a problem so when the service will not be uh, reachable or would not be functional and when it is fine and the rest is done by the Zabbix so let's say if uh, we have a root so that's that's the top level and uh, just for the test I've added uh, in a configuration host so one uh, test host with one item and one trigger which I automatically forced to be a problem so this so we could actually see that SLA drops Okay, so let's start building something. Uh, configuration services, so let's say we add a child and we call this service uh, our, um, let's say, web frontends, right? And the parent service is root, so this will be uh, first first service uh, status calculation algorithm. Uh, this probably um, is I, f I think that it is quite a big limitation for the Zabbix because there are only uh, two options how we can calculate SLA. So if at least one child has a problem and if all children have a problem, uh, you'll see what are the children's in the next step. So right now I will leave it just for the test. At least one child has a problem. Then if we want to calculate SLA or not, so click yes, I want to calculate SLA uh, so for my web frontends and accessible uh, acceptable SLA is 99.9. .9. I won't define any triggers for this uh, because it will be basically uh, my service name, web frontend. And inside this web frontend, I will have multiple services on which this web frontend depends. So I'll just click add. There we go, we have a web frontend group on which I am calculating SLA and web frontend will be a problem if at least one child will be a problem. So uh, let's add the child to the web frontend. Add child and let's make this uh, Apache web engine which is uh, needed for the web, uh, web servers and uh, I won't calculate SLA on it because this is end service, right? This is Apache, which is needed to provide web pages. And I must uh, make sure that my Apache is accessible. When we're talking about SLAs, we're not really interested in some performance metrics, like is it fast or is it slow? There's only one thing we're interested about, is it running? Is our service is reachable? So specify, uh, I will just use something on the example, like um, 
don't bother that I will specify like out of inodes and not just a test trigger from the Zabbix server. Normally you would specify some actual availability trigger for your Apache. Click add. So done. We have Apache web engine. Let's create another one. So for the web frontend, what else? Uh, databases. So that's also a needed thing, a needed service for our web services. Again, specify some kind of the triggers. Done. Right? There we go. So webs, web frontend and two childs. In my web frontend, I have that if at least one child has a problem, then SLA will drop. Uh, and there's the limitation, like only one, at least one, or all of them. There is no option to specify that SLA should drop if this, this, and this will be a problem. Let's say if I have a high availability on my Apaches, high availability on my databases, and all of these nodes are added to the SLA, there's no way for me to specify that um, SLA should drop if at least one node from Apache and a database is down. So, yeah, if at least one or all of them. Like at this part, we can check in the monitoring services. So this is the place where all the visualization is happening. So we see the status of our SLA is okay. Uh, SLA is 100% because all of my, well, both of my two triggers that I added to uh, my services are all the time in the okay state and there's no problem. So let's go back to the configuration services and let's add so web front and done um, let's create a new service so add a new child uh, this time for the root because we'll be creating a separate um, separate service and call this like uh, I don't know for I also want to calculate SLA for this and for this acceptable SLA will be 95 um, okay click add and my forum, so it's here, is also dependent on, uh, let's say, add a child um, test problem. So now I will use uh, the one which I created on my problem host, which is a test problem for SLA, and click add. So right now, actually, the forum SLA is... Uh, counting down so if i would go to the monitoring services again you see uh, forum is in a status high and sla is actually dropping couple of additional things in the configuration um you saw this like sort order zero uh in this one it's also zero but why how it is used basically only to order the services in the list like if i want to be the forum the last one then if i'm not wrong it should be higher number than the other ones yeah there we go so now forum is the last one um another thing like my forum is dependent on my test uh, service or whatever else but also it is dependent on the same database same database which is also used to my web frontend so what should I do? It would be not uh, correct to uh, basically create a duplicate database under my forum. So what we do is add a child on my forum and add a dependency. So services depends on and choose databases from my uh, first tree. Uh, soft link means that you will see this. So I will just click add. Okay, I need a name. Uh, database dependency click add uh, soft link means that these are as two separate services but actually those those are the same so it, it's really just a link in the Linux system so we specify that my uh, forum also depends on this database uh, service which is also listed here but those are serving as one uh, what else so talked about that one uh, when you are specifying the triggers that's really like important uh, remember that trigger has multiple severities right that's nothing new uh, when you're creating a trigger you can specify the severity 
not classified and informational information severity is not counted in the SLA. So only warning, average, high and disaster. If you will create a trigger with information severity and add it to your uh, service tree, it will always be in the OK state. Second thing, uh, maintenances, right? Uh, you're probably used to configure them in the configuration maintenances where you create a new period with data collection or without data collection, then add a period inside the period to which you link a host or host groups that will be inside the maintenances. Uh, this maintenance in the configuration maintenance does not apply in the IT services. Even if you will put all of your hosts to the maintenance through this one option, still, if trigger will be in the problem state, SLA in the IT services will drop. If you want to add additional or let's say separate maintenance to your IT services, you need to go to the configuration services, find the service which you want to put to the maintenance, click on it, go on the time and then choose that it will be uh, scheduled downtime from every Sunday till every Sunday or uh, every Monday till Tuesday, well depends, or it could be just one time downtime with some description and also specify a time period when uh, the service could be down but SLA will not drop. So if you have uh, a need to configure maintenance period, you have to do that specifically on IT services, not in the normal maintenance configuration. And the last part, so visualization of all that stuff that you created in the monitoring services already showed previously. So here you can uh, really see all of your services um, in the group. So let's say in general, we have a web front and which is okay. And we have a forum, which is uh, SLA dropping. Uh, because we have one trigger which is in the problem state constantly. Uh, period can be changed for, let's say today, it's 100% SLA drop because as long as I created the tri uh, trigger, it went to the problem state and it never went back okay. So if I select a longer period, then SLA looks better. And I can click on my, uh, let's say, root level of the service forum to see detailed periods. So if I would specify weekly uh, this year, so each line represents a week. So in this week, uh, four minutes, this service was in a problem. Or it could be daily, so two minutes, um, yeah, actually it's midnight already, so two minutes in uh, 18 and two minutes in 17 December. Or it could be monthly and yearly. Also, just for the visualization purposes, you can always click on the problem time and you can see stuff like that where actually everything looks green because this is a yearly view. And just here, 16 December, which actually will be 17, 18, you can see there's a small red line right in the top. So that's when I created the trigger and when it went to the problem, when I added the service. Yep, uh, that's about it. So that's all you can do with ID services. Of course, normally you build much bigger tree, uh, a lot of soft dependencies. Probably the most important thing is to specify correct triggers, which actually mean availability of your service, not just some performance metrics. And then you can do the monitoring of the services. Uh, core functionality remains the same, like from the older versions of the Zabbix, at least 3.0. Um, the SLA is the same as in 4.4, so nothing new in terms of configuration. But in the older releases, there were a couple of uh, quite tricky and, and, and ugly bugs for the IT services when, let's say, the problem could be resolved. So you have a trigger like test problem for the SLA and you see that in the configuration uh, or monitoring problems that uh, the trigger is actually resolved. So this is an OK state, but SLA continues to drop. Um, quite unlikely, but uh, happened um, longer time ago so if you're on the older releases of the Zabbix might still be a thing uh, there is still a way to fix those cases and fix your SLA so calculate them correctly 
but it does require uh, some additional work in the database. Since this uh, that bug is fixed in the newer releases and uh, like long time I had not seen any of those like issues, I will not cover a uh, possible fix, uh, manual fix in the database in this video. Uh, like if you have those cases and you want to get a help then just ask in the comments. Um, so ask your questions.